We're now joined by the group CEO, Joseph Abrahams. Uh, Joe, welcome back to the program. Let's get straight to it. Uh, what is possible for the remainder of 2020, given what you've been able to learn from these latest Q2 results? Uh, good morning, Yusuf. Uh, I would say that we are probably likely to see more of the same uh, for commercial bank and for the banking sector in general. What you've seen from the first half results is um, the building up of uh, risk buffers. So most of the banks have built up significant risk buffers in anticipation of, uh, uh, I'd say, prudent provisioning for what may happen once the stimulus measures are taken off. So I would say that is the major feature of most of the results. Most of the banks have shown some increase in their net interest income, and we have. Our net interest income has gone up 28 percent uh, during the year. That's offset some of the decline in uh, non-funded income because there was less credit card spend due to lack of travel, etc. So I'd say you're likely to see more of the same. The key issue will be how the economies do uh, post uh, the removal of some of the stimulus measures. Uh, which is likely for Qatar in September. So we'll have to see how things go after that. I mean, you mentioned some of the stimulus measures. Uh, the central bank's been very active there and also on the fiscal front. Uh, what's the take-up being from employers for the pay guarantee scheme? And do you foresee the private sector needing an extension of some of those programs? Well, the, there's been pretty good take-up on the National Response Guarantee Program. So uh, we've been one of the leading providers of that, which provides uh, for a period of um, time for rental and uh, salary payments uh, guaranteed through the Qatar Development Bank. In addition, there's been significant deferral of uh, principal and interest payments for a period of six months for many of the affected sectors. Um, so there has been good take up um, in that space and um, across the banking sector. And the bank sector has been very supportive working with the Qatar Central Bank. And uh, the overall stimulus package is worth about $20 billion, um, which included some support to the stock market. So I'd say uh, the take-up has been good. It has been well-received, and it's been working. Uh, the question will be how the economy uh, works. And the economy is slowly opening up, and I think that is going to be the, you know, flights are now starting, yeah. people are starting to arrive. So I think it's going to be that mix of how the two sort of fold into each other, the uh, restarting of the economy versus the removal of the stimulus. I mean, you hit the nail on the head in terms of the prospects for an economic recovery, but what shape is that going to take? Because the data in the U.S. came as a bit of a surprise for those who were betting on a V-shaped recovery. I mean, where is your thinking at the moment? Look, for us, I think um, in Qatar, uh, Qatar is, uh, has the benefit of, I would say, a great degree of resilience. And I think this is something which I would, because um, in 2017, because of the blockade, many of the sectors which were affected were not dissimilar to today, travel, tourism, hospitality, retail, uh, some of the real estate, logistics, some security, uh, so supply chain. So all these have actually, Qatar has built resilience into these sectors, and the banking sector has also uh, uh, managed its exposure in these various areas well. So I would say that Qatar, given its fiscal buffers uh, and its um, ability uh, and the resilience it's already built, will come out of it reasonably well. And, uh, in fact, if you look at I think there was a Goldman Sachs um, study which showed that Qatar was the only country in the GCC which would have a positive fiscal uh, balance uh, next year and the year after, and uh, with, I think, Kuwait coming through in the year after. So uh, that's what I would say is the likely thing. And given that the government continues to spend on the uh, World Cup, that's continuing unchanged in terms of the expenditure. Uh, the North Field expansion continues. The port expansion continues. The airport expansion continues. So there will be continuing government expenditure which will continue to uh, stimulate and support yeah. the economic growth in Qatar. Uh, many GCC countries, including Qatar, are facing the ongoing phenomenon of an exodus of foreigners. And with that comes a contraction of, in quite a few markets. Um, you've got a, less of a consumer base. Uh, you've got issues then in, in quite a few sectors as a result of that. How do you pre prepare, how do you mitigate the risks that come with the 
departure of a lot of these foreigners as the population becomes a little bit smaller? Yeah, I would say the uh, perhaps again in Qatar the mix is probably changing as the construction projects reach maturity. Uh, then the mix of the workers uh, changes from the construction-related side to the more running the infrastructure. So if you build a metro system, you need people to run it. Uh, similarly, uh, in, in the rest of the infrastructure, the port, the airport as they expand. So you need a mix of uh, skilled workers. So I think it's a change, and that's a transition. You might see some absolute numbers coming down in terms of uh, the worker composition, but the uh, composition will change to uh, more sort of management or uh, white-collar workers who then have a different mm -hmm. footprint in terms of their consumer spend, etc. So I think that's the nature of the transition which is going to happen in Qatar. And that is supportable um, in, in the banking sector and for the economy. It's actually probably positive in the long term. The last time we spoke, you said you still wanted to play a role in the consolidation story in Oman. Uh, I wonder whether your priorities have shifted, whether you've recalibrated some of that as a result of COVID now. I would say that our strategy remains on track. I mean, COVID and other uh, situations which occur, uh, you adjust to them. But your fundamental strategy, if it's correct and if you're committed to it, remains the same. So for us, we see ourselves as being long-term players and committed to our uh, uh, investments in Turkey and in Oman. And ultimately, it's the board of National Bank of Oman and, uh, which will make the final call. But as a major shareholder, we remain supportive of the plans which will uh, improve uh, the position for NBO. So that's our position, and it hasn't changed. 